All right then, gang. So now we have some type definitions, which describe the data we have in the graph, and also specify the entry points to the graph, which are to query all the reviews, all the games, and all the authors. And we also have resolver functions for each of those queries too, which return the data so it can be sent to the client. But what if a user just wants to send a query for a single review or a single author or a single game? Well, currently that wouldn't work for two reasons. First, we don't specify that a user can enter the graph in that way in the root query. The only three entry points that we have are queries for all the reviews, all the games, or all the authors. And secondly, we don't have any resolver functions to handle queries for single items. We only have them to match these three entry points for lists of data. So we need to address both of those things, starting with this root query type. And the way we do that is by just adding more entry points to the graph. So underneath reviews, I'm going to make another query available called review singular for a user to fetch a single review. And that query is going to return a single review object. Now we need to add one more thing to this, and that's a query variable to say that when a user makes this query, we expect them to send a variable along with it as well. And that variable would be the ID of the review that they want to fetch because we need the ID to find the review in our data in order to send it back to them. So to do that, we just add parentheses after the query name, and then we can add a variable name, which I'm going to call ID. And we also need to specify the type of this variable that we expect as well, which is going to be the ID type. And finally, we want to say that this variable is required when someone makes this query, so it can't be null. And we know to do that, we can just add the exclamation mark at the end of it. So now we're saying a user can make an initial query for a single review, but they must pass in this variable to the query, which must be an ID. So now we just need to make a resolver function for this query as well. So back in the index file, we can add a new function inside the query property of the resolvers object. And that function is going to be called review singular again. And inside this function, we basically need to return a single review based on the ID variable that a user passes into the query. So how do we get that ID in this resolver function? Well, we automatically get three arguments available to us in these functions that we can use. The first one is something called parents, which refers to the parent resolver in a resolver chain. That probably doesn't make much sense at the minute, but hopefully it will do later on when we start working with related data and nested queries. I'm going to rename this first one to underscore because we don't need that in this function. The second one, which we do need, is called args, which stands for arguments. And it's on here that we can access any query variable sent with the query. The third one is a context object, which we can use for supplying context values across all of our resolvers, such as authentication information or something like that. But we don't need that third argument right now. So we can get any query variables that a user sends in the query from this args object. And what we want is the ID variable. So we can just say args.id to get that. And we can use the ID now to find whatever review has the ID in our data and then return it. So the way I'm going to do this is by just taking db.reviews again. And then I'm going to use the find method to find a single review. So this find method basically finds a function for every item inside the reviews array. And for each item, we can take in a review as an argument. So if we go back to the data, if we're cycling through this, it will refer to this first, then this, then this, then this, okay? So each time we cycle through one of these items, we can check the ID property of it. Now, if that ID property matches the ID on this argument, then we want to return true inside this function. And when we return true, it no longer needs to cycle through the rest of the array, and it just returns that value for us right here, okay? So we need to say, get the review.id and see if it's triple equal to args.id. So when that is true, that is the review that we want to return to the user. Hope that makes sense. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So now we can save this and test it out in the browser. Okay, so how do we actually send a query variable from the front end when we're making a query? Well, first of all, after the query name, we can use parentheses to declare any variables that can be passed into this query as a whole. Now that can be multiple variables in the future, but for now, it's just gonna be one variable, the ID. 
And if you were using something like React to make this query, you could pass those variables into the whole query from a React component. And then within the query, we can use those variables for different parts of the query. So first of all, let's declare what variables can be passed into the query as a whole. So inside parentheses, we declare each variable that can be passed in using a dollar sign and then the variable name. So we can say dollar sign and then ID. And then after that, we use a colon and specify what type of data this variable should be. In our case, that's the ID type. For all intents and purposes, it's going to be a string that we pass in, but it's an ID type. Now, in order to pass that variable into the query from Apollo Sandbox, you can come down here to the bottom and select variables. And then you can make a JSON object of key value pairs, one for each variable. So we can add the ID one and set it to be one in quotations. So now these variables are gonna get passed into the query and populate the arguments inside the parentheses right up here. So this variable will now have the value that we passed in from down here. And we can use that variable when we request a single review inside this query. So let's do that. Let's ask for a single review and then pass in the ID of the review that we want to find. So we can say ID is equal to the ID variable, which in turn is equal to one. And that's all we have to do to say that we want that one single review. We can also specify which fields we want back as well though, for example, the rating and also the content properties. So now we're asking for one single review with the ID of one, and we just want these two fields for that review. And if we hit send, we should see the response from the server, which contains that review and inside it, the two fields that we asked for. Awesome. So that's how we use query variables from the front end. Now let's try and do something similar for the other two data types that we've got. All right then, so back in the schema, let's define our different entry points. So underneath games, I'm gonna do a single one, so game, and that's gonna return a single game object. Now again, we need to declare that this needs an ID argument or variable, which is of type ID and that's required. And same for this down here, author. And again, we need to define the query variable, which is of type ID and required, and that returns a single author. So that's the schema done. Back over in index, we need to basically do the same thing for author and game that we did for review. So I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it up here, change the name of this to game, and we still need the args. The whole logic is the same. However, we just need to rename this to game and this to game as well. So we're basically returning the game where the IDs match. And then down here, we need a comma, first of all and we have authors. So let's paste this in again, do a comma, change this to author singular, and we'll change this to author, and change this to author. And also we need to change this one right here because we want to look inside the games array, and this one should be the authors array. I think that's pretty much it. So now this should all work for the other two types as well, but let's check it out in Apollo Explorer. So then let's give this a whirl. I'm not going to change the name because it doesn't really matter, but we're always still passing in the ID and we'll just pass in one. It doesn't have to change. I mean, we'll change it to two just to have a look. And then this time instead of review, in fact, let's try review first of all to see if we can get a different one back, which we do. Okay. Now let's change this to game with the ID of two. Now we need different fields for the game. I think we have a title and also a platform. I'm also going to return the ID just to make sure it's getting the correct one. And we can see the ideas to the title and also the platforms. Uh, let's try a different one. So we'll say three here, send that. Okay, yeah, that works. And then finally, let's try the authors. So singular author, I'm gonna go back to one and we want the name and we'll also get the verified status. That's it, verified like so, and the ID, press, this send button and we can see this works as well. Let's change the variable to two and yeah, it brings back the Yoshi one, the different one. Awesome, so this is all working now. That's how we can send query variables in our queries.